Hello viewers, uh, welcome back to the course on scientific computing using MATLAB. So in the previous lecture, we have tried to make some MATLAB codes for the given methods, whatever we have discussed in this unit. So today I will give last topic in this unit and then we will start with the numerical differentiation. So today I will give you that suppose how we can extend the least square line to the data of different type. So suppose we have the data points, so that data points are distributed in the given x or y coordinates. So suppose these are the data points we are going to have. Now if I approximate this one with the least square line, so our least square line will be like suppose this one or it may have like this one or it may be like this one. But from here if I know find that the data pattern looking at the data pattern we find that this pattern can be approximated with a function which is not definitely which is not a, a line. It may be a function of this type so like this one or I can say that this is exponential function. So the given looking at the pattern what we do in generally what we do first we try to plot the given data in the xy plane. So looking at that pattern of this one we approximate the given using the least square approximation. So how I can extend the least square line to the, to the function of different type. So that is the how we can do this one. So I will try to find what is the approximation by standard formula. So standard formula like this one in this case. So I take the case number 1. Suppose I want to approximate this with some exponential function. So a is to power bx. So this is my pattern and looking at this pattern I see that okay exponential function is fitting for this given data. So how we can uh, fit a exponential function for the given data. So let us suppose this is my exponential function and I want to fit this one in the given data. So what I do is that I will take the so taking log both side natural log. So it is my ln y so that is ln a e b x. So I can write from here this is my ln a plus ln e b x which can be written as a plus b x. So this is my ln y. So now from here you can see that I have transferred or this data that was exponential into the linear form. So I can introduce that let my ln y is equal to capital Y my ln a is a another constant I call it capital A. So from here equation 1 can be written as y is equal to a plus bx and that is the equation of a line and this equation of line we know that how to find this equation of line using the least square approximation. So using least square line we can find the coefficients capital A and P. So once I know the value of capital A and B I will put the value of capital A here and I will find the value of A by taking the exponential and taking the capital Y, I am taking this Y. 
So, once I know that is this value, then ln y will be capital Y. So, from here I will e raised to power y. I can find my small y, so that is e raised to power capital Y. Similarly, I can find ln small a that is equal to capital A. And from here I can find the value of A that is e raised to power capital A. So, once I get this value I am able to find this and that is my linear approximation. So, based on this one for the given exponential function I have converted that one into the linear form. So, that is called the linearization of the exponential function and using the method of least square line I am able to find this one and then I will able to solve the equation number 1. So, once I having the value of a and b, then after the finding values of small a and b, because small a is there and b is there, I am able to find my exponential function y is equal to a e raised to power b x. So, this is the way we can find. Now, based on this one I am able to find my approximation of the exponential function. So, this is the way we can find out. Now, the I define the case 2. Let my pattern of the given data is satisfying the function of this type a x raised to power b. So, in this case the same again taking log both side I will get ln y is equal to ln a plus b ln x. Now, from here I will write this y is equal to a 0 plus b x, where a 0 is ln a and capital X is ln x and capital Y is ln y. So, once I get this value, this is the corresponding line I am going to have, then using the again the same as the least square line. I will try to find value of a 0 and b and based on this a 0 and b I will try to find the value of a and x y and then we can find out this power function using the least square approximation. The same way I can define the another type of pattern. So, case 3 y is given to of this type. So, b raised to power x like exponential function. So, in this case also I will take the log both side. So, it will be ln a plus x ln b. From here I can write y is equal to a 0 plus b 0 x. So, again based on this linear approximation I can find the value of this coefficient a 0 and b 0 and then from here I can find the value of a and b. So, that a and b is now known to us. So, based on this one I can find out this approximation. So, in this way we can find out different different approximation Maybe I can take case 4 let I the data pattern of this type suppose a 0 plus a 1 x square plus a 2 x 4. So, this is the fourth order polynomial. So, in this case what I do let I put x square is equal to x. So, from here I will get y is equal to a 0 plus a 1 x plus a 2 x square and that we know how to find this one. So, this is a parabolic fit. And we have also discussed that how we can approximate this parabolic function 
and based on this parabolic function I can find the value of A0, A1 and A2 and then I can approximate this function. So just taking the small substitution we can take the help of least square approximation for polynomial spline or linear or polyno, uh, parabolic then we can find the exponential fit or power fit for different different type of data functions. So that we can do with the help of least square line. So this is all about the unit related to the interpolation. Now we are going to start the next unit and the next unit is numerical differentiation. So let us we try to find out that how we can take the help of numerical differentiation. So numerical differentiation is that now suppose I have the, I have the data and based on this data suppose this is my data I have So let us I take the interpolating polynomial from here or maybe a cubic spline. So suppose this is my interpolating polynomial okay. and suppose this data is satisfying some function. So suppose this is a function of this type. So this is my function suppose I take this function like this one. Now from here I want to find the value of the derivative at this point suppose I take this point. So this is the point x I am taking and I want to approximate the value of the derivative of the function at this x or maybe I can choose this x or I can choose this x. So all these points I do not want the value of the function but I want the derivative of the, the value of the derivative of the function. So in that case we have to take the numerical differentiation. So in this case also we have the value x0, x1, x2, x3 and xn and the corresponding y0, y1, y2, y3 up to yn. So based on this data I will I will make a interpolating polynomial or curve fitting and based on that one we will try to find out the value of the derivative at any point x in between these data points. So that we are going to do with the help of numerical differentiation. Now from here if you see that at the nodal values this is my function so that is the function fx and this is my interpolating polynomial so I call it maybe px. Now from here you will see that at the nodal points the actual derivative is this one but approximating derivative is this one actual derivative at this point is this one but if I approximate it with the interpolating polynomial then this is the derivative here this one okay. So the same thing is happening here actually this one and approximating is this one. So you can see that there is a very dif big difference between the derivatives at this nodal values because here you can see that actual is the positive one but the approximating is the negative one. Here the actual is the positive but approximating is something like a parallel to x axis or negative value. So from here you can see that that we can say that the interpolating polynomial px oscillates about the curve fx 
that we know because the interpreting polynomial has all this nodal value as the root. So, that is why it, it will interpolate like this one. So, it, it will oscillate about the curves. So, in this case I can say that the errors will be quite large in the case of derivative. In the case of derivatives. So, now based on this one, so how to try to find out the value. So, suppose I have somewhere x here and I want to find what is my p2 derivative at this x, p2 or maybe p n I should define this as p. So, this is my interpreting polynomial and I want to find the value of the derivative at any x this one. So, now we'll, in this case we will take the help of the previous unit. So, let us uh, uh, try to find out this one. Now, to find the value of the derivative of the function at any x belongs to x 0 to x n. So, this is the point value is given to me. We we try to use the interpolating polynomials and then and then taking their derivatives will help to up to approximate the derivative okay so let's try to uh, take this one so let's take the case one when the nodal values are equispaced. So, let us try to find out this one. So, in this case I have my x naught x 1 up to x n and they are equispaced I have the value y 0 y 1 up to y n. Now, somebody asked me that try give me the value of x the value of the derivative of x for the x lying here. So, in this case we want we want to find the approximate value of derivative at x in the upper part of the difference table. So, this is the way we can find the difference table and suppose this is the value I want to find the upper half. So, I know that so we can approximate so first we can approximate the Newton's forward formula. for interpolating polynomial. Right? So, now we know that I can find the interpolating polynomial. So, let us I will take x is equal to x naught plus p h where h is constant. So, in this case it is given to me. 
now I can find my yp the interpolating polynomial that is given by as y0 plus p forward plus p p minus 1 by 2 factorial p p minus 1 p minus 2 by 3 factorial and so on. So, this is my interpolating polynomial. Now, I can write my p as x minus x naught by h, right. So, from here I can find the derivative dp by dx. So, dp by dx will be 1 by h. Now, I can find what is dy by dx. So, I can find my dy by dp because y is containing this p and this will be d per by dx and dp by dx is 1 by h. So, from here I can write 1 by h dv by dp. So, this is a y function, it is a function of p. So, I can take the derivative to this one. Similarly, I can define second derivative. So, from here I can define by d by dx. So, 1 by h d y by d p. So, this will be again equal. So, I will write d by d p 1 by h d y by d p into d p by d x. And from here I will get 1 by h square. So, that will be d square y by d p square. So, this, this way we can find any derivative. Now, from here differentiate equation 1 with respect to p. So, that we can find out. We can differentiate the equation 1 with respect to p. So, now I will get my d u by d p. So, d u by d p will be what? It will be y naught plus then it is p square minus p. So, it is 2 p minus 1 by 2 del square y naught plus again I can take the derivative of this one. So, it will be p cube minus 3 p square like this one. So, I can take the derivative. So, it will be 3 p square minus 6 p plus 2 divided by 3 factorial y naught and so on. So, this is equation number 2. So, based on this one I can find what is my d y by d x. So, at the value of x. So, this can be written as my d u by, by d p into d p by d x. So, from here I can write 1 by h forward plus 2 p minus 1 by 2 del square y naught plus 3 p square minus 6 p by 2 plus 2 by 3 factorial and so on. So, based on this one I can find the value of the derivative directly from here. So, I put the value of y, I put all these difference values here, putting the value of p, whatever the p value we want to, we can choose from there and multiply by 1 by h, it will give you the value of the derivative for the given x. So, using this one, I can write this as 3. So, from equation 3, we can find the value of derivative d over d x for given x and that is x naught plus p h. Okay. So, then using this one we Newton forward methods we can find out this one. So, the same way we can apply Similarly, we 
can apply Newton's backward formula for for the value x lying in the bottom of the defense table or and central formula and Stirling central formula for x lying in the middle of the defense table. So, and that we already know that how to apply this Newton backward formula or the Stirling central formula. So, once we find this Newton backward or central formula, we can take the derivative of the corresponding uh, uh, that uh, interpolating polynomial and then we put the value of p in this one and then we can find the value of the derivative there. So, in this case we have just to repeat the process for finding out the interpolating polynomial and then we can take the derivative just to get the approximate value. So, in this case we are not going to repeat this again and again. So, this is we have done for the case when the nodal values were equispaced. Then the next case is case 2 when the when the data is not equispaced. So, if in this case if the data is not equispaced, then I apply, then we know that we can apply a Lagrange interpolating polynomial or Newton divided difference formula. So, in this case suppose I apply the given uh, for the given data I apply the Lagrangian interpolating polynomial. So, I know that the suppose I have three points. So, I have the polynomial may be x minus x 1, x minus x 2, x naught minus x 1, y 0. Suppose I have three points x naught, y naught or x naught, x 1 x 1 and x 2. So, in this case I will find out this polynomial x 2 minus x 0, x 2 minus x 1, y 2. So, I will get this polynomial and that is a polynomial in x, then I can take the derivative of this one, taking derivative. So, that will be in the p, da, p dash x. So, from here I can approximate the any the value of the derivative for any x lying between x 0 to x 2 or same way similarly we can we can find derivative of the Newton's divided 
difference formula. So, in that case also we are getting the, the interpolating polynomial and then I can take the derivative with respect to x and then we can approximate any value of x in between x0 to xn to find out the value of the derivative for, for the given x. So, this way we can find out with the help of the interpolating polynomial that we have discussed in the previous lecture, we can find out the value of the derivatives, first derivative or the second derivative of any value of x lying in the given values of x. So, that is x from x0 to xn. So, I will stop it here, stop today. So, today we have started with that how we can apply the standard formula for the least square lines and then we started with the numerical differentiation. So, with the help of the interpolating polynomial, we can find out the value of the derivative for any x, find any x lying between the data. So, there is no need to do the, to repeat this again and again. So, we will continue with this one in the next lecture. So, thanks for watching, uh, thanks very much.